sopping wet beast roaming round your living room making the floors puddle with water. Land of frost and frogs. Chicken in Star Wars. Secret horses. <laughs> this is actually funny. <laughs> A very pretty idea. I first came into contact with these pictures on Tumblr with the hashtag NeuroBlenda had been trending for a few days. At first, I thought it had something to do with Halloween, as looking through the tag, you will find so many weird, creepy, and bizarre pictures. And it was just so fitting that the hashtag was trending around Halloween as well, so I was like, okay, maybe. Neuroblenda is some kind of Halloween thing, but it's kind of weird, so let's look into it. So what exactly are we actually talking about here? Neural, that's got something to do with the brain and everything. And well, Blender, <laughs> Blender I only knew from my 3D modeling course and it's still giving me nightmares. So what exactly are we neural blending here? Well, as it turns out, Neuroblender is a neat little website where whatever you type into it, whether it be a little word or a sentence, turns into a picture. It's basically an AI that creates your picture from the word that you're writing. So kind of like an AI creating art code. I don't know, um, whoever made this obviously is a genius because this machine is actually genius as well. And looking through these pictures, the AI is actually quite smart because you can always realize some kind of what you were writing actually in the picture. So that's also why it takes some time, I guess, until the picture is processed and everything, because it obviously has to search through a million related pictures on the internet, trying to find out what kind of art you're trying to create with what you're writing in it. And as fun as all of this is, I find it even more interesting in a way, how little information about the website or the website builders itself you can find on the internet. Like I was like, okay, I found the website by Googling Neural Blender, but you can't find anything else. Well, they have this blog and they have a Twitter, but there is no kind of information into how this code was created because that's actually what I'm really interested in. I'm like, okay, how smart is this fucking code and the fucking person behind it? Because obviously there's some kind of genius sitting out there who's like coding AIs that are probably going to take my job away someday. <laughs> because who's gonna need a graphic designer when you've got an AI that's creating pictures much more compelling in like seconds time with no money going into it whatsoever. Um, yeah, my job is definitely <laughs> safe for the future. <laughs> also, I'm not the only one asking this question, as this Twitter user helpfully contextualizes. Behind all of this fun, there is a very high level complicated code. Um, and it's out there for free, for you to try, for us all to try. As Google Trends illustrates, the boom of this tool is also very niche and still very new, um, as I was only getting aware of it because I was on Tumblr Trends around Halloween and even now it's kind of going down a little bit already again. But there's still like a whole community out there creating funny pictures with Neural Blender on Reddit and Tumblr and even Twitter as well. So I think it's just very, very fun to see what everyone's been coming up with or not what everyone has been coming up with, but what this AI can come up with when you put whatever you want into it. So while the origins might be a kind of a mystery, one fact still stands, the website really, really works. And I think we should, at this point, maybe try it out ourselves so you can see what I'm talking about. When you see the website for the first time, it totally reminds me of something in the early 2000s where everyone was just building their own website and it was just too, so fun to see, but it wasn't the most creative thing ever and it wasn't also the most aesthetically pleasing thing ever. Um, but this thing can create aesthetically pleasing things. So maybe let's let's just take a leap of faith. What, what do we want to create here? There's also a premium tier where you can also um, make maybe higher resolutions or get faster renders or something. But we're going to work with the free tier because I just want to show you what is possible for each one of you. Um, and also don't have money, so <laughs> uh, we're just gonna work with the free tier. And what are we gonna create? I want, I want something fun. Well, right now it's actually leading up to Christmas, um, but it's also still Corona time right here in Germany. I don't want to open the topic, but the pandemic is making it kind of hard to get into the Christmas spirit. So maybe let's just try in Christmas pandemic and see what Neuroblender comes up with. So now our picture is being created. This can take up to like five minutes or something. We're just going to wait. Um, this is <laughs> uh, what uh, the algorithm came up with. I have to look at it. It's closely. What is this? It looks like it's trying to make like its own virus aesthetic thing with... Uh, Bobbles and candy canes or oh, what what is it? <laughs> well, but at the same time, if you were to take this picture and make an oil painting out of it, I could see it hanging in like a 
a restaurant, I want to say. <laughs> I, I could see it hanging in a museum. Do you know what I mean? Isn't that kind of fun? Like, that's amazing. Just some kind of AI made this because I typed two words into an algorithm. Let's try Pokemon in art school. I don't know how I came up with this. I just want to see what happens. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Pokemon in art school! Oh my god! Ah, this is this is exactly what you want when you type in something like this, you know? It's amazing. I don't know what this green thing over there is because it's not a Pokemon, and I think that over there in the corner is some kind of Chickman Pikachu or something. Um, but th that's obviously a Pokeball there. You, you can't deny it, and I don't know. They're making art, I guess. So <laughs> the picture is uh, what it says on the tin. <laughs> Well, if we want to take this whole discussion one step further, I think in this discussion we also have to ask ourselves the question, is it art? Or in that case, can AI create art? Obviously, we're getting unnecessarily philosophical here, but this is just the kind of thing that interests me when we're talking about this. The thing is also that uh, I've worked with generative design already, and obviously it's not something that I myself am drawing on a piece of paper, but something that a code is creating for me. So in a way, I'm still the designer, but the code is creating something for me. But I just think that if we think this a little bit further, if designers or artists are going to create code that is just going to do all the art for them, then are we even still the designer? Or is it the code or the AI that is doing all the work? Is the true artist that you see behind all these pictures in Tumblr and Twitter, the engineer that created the code, is it the person that wrote the sentence or word or whatever? Or is it the AI that is just taking everything from the internet and then putting it together? A simple Google search into this topic can actually open up a whole rabbit hole. Um, with honestly scary questions to read because, well, the future is only a step away now and to see how fast we've progressed in only the last 20 years is scary to think how far we could go in the next 20 years. Can AI create true art? And if it can, what are the implications for the future of creativity? Since the beginning of the digital arts have, of course, been experimenting with new options. Hell, I'm experimenting with stuff like this right now, as I told you before, I'm working with generative design here and there, and I'm trying processing or whatever all of these things are called. Experimental design is just a huge part of the creative landscape nowadays. But while it is digital, it's mostly still code or node based, and therefore I have the whole control over the image, and I can control how it looks like in the end, because I am the one writing the code or connecting the nodes. AI art, in contrast to this, is when artists write algorithms not to follow a set of rules, but to learn a specific aesthetic by analyzing thousands of images. That algorithm then tries to generate new pictures in adherence to the aesthetics that it learned. In that case, the creator of the algorithm still is the artist, but the thing that has the most influence on the outcome then would be the AI, because of course, while the artist created the code for the AI, the AI is searching for everything and just how the aesthetics are being learned by it and everything. That's something that the artist doesn't have a hundred thousand percent control over. That's why also when you type in the same word twice, you might get two different pictures, simply because the internet landscape or the thing where the AI drives its like intelligence from is ever changing as well. There's new pictures being uploaded every second. Popular opinion among creators is that art is a process by which human beings express some idea or emotion, filtered through personal experience and set it against a broader cultural context, suggesting then that what AI generates at the behest of computer scientists is definitely not art. The same article also in a later part says that art is something that is so distinctive for humans to do. Art is something that we kind of invented and kind of only we can generate and therefore it's something that um, like differentiates us from other creatures on this planet. It kind of got me thinking, are there creatures out there on in our world at least that create visionary or auditory images in a way just for pleasure, for the sake of expressing themselves? And I think it's something that really is kind of attributed only to humans because we kind of made this concept up ourselves, you know? It's something that we created, okay, we made this thing and we therefore are also the ones that kind of say this is art. I think this also ties into the whole question of what is art, of course, anything can be art and like at the same time, not everything is art, obviously. And it's a whole dialogue that is, has to be had over time and time again because art is ever changing as well. Something that might not have been art yesterday might be art 50 years into the future because then it's like expressing something that people there are looking for. I think it's just such an interesting question. And I don't want to say that humans are the only ones uh, who can create something and look at it as art. I mean, to wrap it all up, the question is it art is as old as time and has been challenged by so many artists across centuries and it has to be challenged into the future again. So while we right now might not say that what AI creates is art, 
who is to say that 50 years into the future that standpoint cannot be challenged. I also think that we can't discredit the AIs nowadays for not producing art. Um, and I think that in the future, there will once be an AI that can also maybe not feel, but kind of experience things and make something out of these experiences. And by that definition is that artificial intelligence, they're not creating art because it's creating something based on their experiences. So I think if we think of it like that, I think it's totally possible that an AI can somehow create art one day. And of course you can say, well, that's the person cr that created the AI, so they are the whole artist. That would be like saying, well, your mom created you, so therefore your mom is the artist of that picture that you made. So I guess <laughs> I got so philosophical in this video. I'm so sorry. This was about a fun online website and now we ended up talking about what is art. In the end, this video isn't meant to answer all of these deep questions. It's just meant to inspire you to go into this website and create your wildest dreams and visualize your wildest ideas of words into pictures because it's really, really fun and maybe inspires you furthermore into whatever art you're doing or if you're doing art at all, you can still make fun pictures and share them on Reddit because there's a whole community that's laughing about things like chickens in Star Wars. <laughs> As always, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, I'm honestly honored that you're still here if you made it until this point. Um, and as always, have a nice day, have a nice night, wherever you are, and bye, be back on my channel.